Hi, and welcome to another story. And today we have part nine of Head Kid by David Baddiel, continuing from chapter 47, a very strong word. For a moment, no one said anything. For a moment, there was just silence, as the cloud of pink powder thrown up by the cake mix stew dump settled, and the five completely gunked people on stage just stood there in shock. And then they all started shouting at once. Ah, what is it? I can't see my notebook. My hair, my lovely hair. I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding. No, you're not, Mrs. Valentine Fine. OBE! Sorry, OBE. Who did this? shouted Mr. Man, louder even than Mrs. Valentine Fine OBE. It was a good question, and the answer was fairly quick to reveal itself. Mr. Carter and Diana, and all the teachers, and indeed the whole audience, were looking up. Above the assembly hall stage, used sometimes for a school plays, was a series of rafters on which to hang curtains and scenery. Climbing down from these, holding two big metal containers, dripping with the remains of what had clearly been a lot of cake mix stew, and smiling, beaming in fact, was Ryan Ward. I did, he said, jumping down the final bit to the stage. Ryan Ward, said Mr Barrington. The very same, said Ryan, turning to the audience proudly. I am, yes, Ryan Ward, the best prankster in the history of Bracket Wood School. A round of applause broke out. Stop that, shouted Mr Mann. Yes, uh, maybe, uh, do you stop it, said Mr Carter. What are you going to do about this, Mr Carter, said Miss Malick, wiping her face with a tissue. It wasn't helping much. Yes, what? Mr Mann, Miss Malick, Mrs Valentine, Fine, OBE, Toby and Belinda were all glaring at him. Their looks were made more aggressive because all Mr Carter could see of their faces with their eyes staring out of the pink mess. He turned around. The whole school was looking at him as well. What would be, what would a real head teacher do in this situation, he thought. Oh well, there's only one way to find out. First, he said, grabbing hold of Ryan and pulling him off stage, I'm going to have a strong word with this boy. A very strong word. Chapter 48. When you say guys. Why, Mr Carter, said Mr Carter, why did you do it? Not just the cake mix, but the rude words in your speech, why? They were standing just outside the hall in the corridor. Through the windows of the hall doors could be seen what looked like a series of cartoon characters on stage, a family of pink blobs, all standing and looking back at them, not able to hear what was being said. Ryan was looking down. He was shaking his head. Then he looked up. Because, Ryan, up until an hour ago, I had started to think the whole weird experience might actually have been worth something. I thought it was teaching you something, and as a teacher that made it okay. I thought it was teaching you how to be a bit older, a bit more mature. But then, when I found out you'd done something as stupid and immature as going to see my mother, I just thought, it's all been a waste of time. What's the point? Might as well go the whole Ryan Ward hog and prank this thing to death. Mr Carter frowned. Just because I went to see your mum? Yes, because I don't want the last time my mother sees me for it to be, for it not to be me. Mr Carter frowned more. The last time? Yes. Mr Carter frowned even more. Is she? He didn't want to say it. Ryan, said Ryan. She's in a hospice. I know, well, I saw that's what it was called, but I don't know what that is. I just thought it was a type of hospital. No, it's a place for people who are... Yeah, yes, I understand now. Mr Carter went quiet for a bit. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, he said eventually. But I was lonely, and I missed my mum, and I didn't like the thought of your mum being ill on her own. Ryan looked a bit taken aback by all these reasons, suddenly tumbling out. Well, said Ryan, but... You should at least have told me you'd been to see her, that the hospice was calling. Yes, you, you're right, of course, but I didn't know what a hospice was, really. And if even if I had, I w wouldn't have known what to do. Mr Carter looked up, his eyes moist. These are a very big, very grown-up things to deal with, Mr Carter. And yes, uh, I think I've grown up a bit, like you said, but instead, inside, I'm still only 11. Ryan looked at him. He frowned. He shook his head, and then his eyes softened a little. OK, yes, maybe. Oh, dear. He looked into the hall where the pink people were starting to look very impatient. Maybe I went too far. I'm sorry, Ryan. I was angry with you. I was angry with everything, with the school and this stupid being in the wrong body thing, and with my mother preferring a visit from you to a visit from me. Yes, I, I can see that, said Mr Carter, because I want to be there for my mum, and I want to be there as me, her 43-year-old son. Ryan's eyes softened more, beginning to fill up with tears. It was him, in fact, not Mr Carter, who began to cry. It might not, not have looked that odd to people watching from inside the hall that the told-off boy was starting to cry, but actually it was the first time the man inside the told-off boy had cried for a very, very long time. Then the hall door opened. It was Diana. Guys, 
You've got to come back inside and clean up this mess somehow. Mr Carter looked up at her and then at the boy next to him, tears still running down his cheeks, his face set into a determined expression. When you say guys, he said, going past her, I think you mean me. Chapter 49. Not at all. Right, Mr Carter, said Mr Mann, who had crossed his arms and was standing in a way that said, I may be covered in cake mix, but I am still a man of great importance. We have been waiting here for some time. Mr Carter had come into the hall. Diona had followed him in and followed, finally, looking sheepish, Ryan. I would say none of what has happened today reflects well on your school, and given how precarious Brackettwood's off-head position has been over the last few years, I don't think you can blame anyone for whatever may happen when we submit our report. But putting that aside for the moment, what punishment, and I think Miss Malik and I will be interested to observe this, as it may be your last chance to save the situation, are you going to meet out to the boy who is responsible for... And here Mr Mann swept a pink arm around in the direction of the entire stage. This! Mr Carter stepped up onto the stage and stood in front of the five of them, all still dripping with cake mix. He had to dodge the puddles of it that had developed over the last few minutes. Come here, Ryan Ward, he said. Ryan looked at him then shuffled slowly up the side stairs to the stage, also dodging the pink puddles, and stood next to Mr Carter. Then he looked at the floor again. So, said Mr Carter, you asked me, Mr Mann, a very good question, and that is what punishment am I going to give this boy, who has gunked all of you good people with cake mix stew, so that you look like Peppa Pig's family? The five pink people looked at each other. This wasn't quite what they expected, but he continued. That simply won't do because you're all very, very important people. So I haven't actually been a head teacher that long, but during that short time that I've been in the job, I've learned a few things. And the things I've learned have led me to this decision, which is I am going to punish Ryan Ward, not at all. There was a short silence following this announcement. Then Mr. Mann said, sorry, sorry, Mr. Carter. I don't think I quite caught that, didn't you? That's odd, because I said it really slowly, spacing out all the words, like there was a full stop between each one. I'm going to punish him, not at all, by which I mean he's not going to get a punishment. Chapter 50. Bah! All five gunked people looked completely stumped by this, although to be honest they already looked quite stumped just by being covered in cake mix stew. Ryan, looking up at last, looked quite surprised himself. Here's the thing, Mr Carter continued. Ryan has been under a lot of air pressure recently. Things haven't been quite right in his world for a little while. It's all been very topsy-turvy and confusing, hasn't it, Ryan? Ryan looked at him. Without any sarcasm, he answered in a small voice. Yes. And on top of this, his mother is ill, very ill. I don't want to talk about it too much. It's a private thing, of course, but I know it's been causing Ryan an awful lot of pain and he's very, very worried about her. Silence fell upon the hall and the stage after he said this aren't you? Yes, said Ryan in the same small voice. And sometimes when we're very, very wor worried about something, we do stupid, angry things, don't we? Yeah, yes, yes, Mr Carter, said Ryan. Mr Carter nodded and turned back towards the stage, looking particularly at the two off-head inspectors. Look, I know you're cross because you're covered in cake mix stew, but you know what? Cake mix stew will come off. What won't come off, I don't think, are really bad things happening to you. There was a silence again here, but not a complete silence because it could be heard a little, you could hear a little murmuring, murmurs of agreement, of people in the room saying, yes, and that's right, and good point. Because Mr. Mann, Miss Malik, continued Mr. Carter, I think we're all in the business, aren't we, of trying to make life better for kids. And when life is tough for them, the uh, one thing I guess we should have is understanding and maybe a bit of mercy. So that's why, because I know he's ashamed about what he did anyway, I'm not going to punish Ryan Ward. No one said anything for a tiny moment, and then very, very slowly a ripple of applause started at the back of the hall. It got louder and louder as all the children, the Oakcroft pupils as well as the Bracket Wood ones, joined in. It got louder still as they rose to their feet and began stomping and stamping and cheering. And then Diona on stage turned to the audience and began to sing, Oh, Headmaster Carter. Mr Carter looked around and suddenly everyone joined in. Oh, Headmaster Carter. Even the Oakcroft children, even Miss Gerard and Mr Barrington, even as the head teacher looked around on stage, Miss Malik, and then, a bit more reluctantly and uncertainly, as if he wasn't quite sure but finally decided to do it anyway, Mr Mann. Oh, Headmaster Carter. And even Ryan Ward. Oh, Headmaster Carter. This is a bit weird, I have to tell you, he said. Tur. Mr Carter smiled. There were three people who weren't doing it, of course. Right, Toby. Belinda, that's enough. Let's go. 
One of those, three people shouted, still covered in pink cake muck. She, Toby and Belinda left the stage and made their way towards the door. Actually, Bells, said Toby, licking her finger, it's surprisingly treats. Oh, shut up, you posh himbo. Sorry about everything. Mrs. Valentine, fine, called Mr. Carter after them. O-B-E, which stands for all battle axe. Ugh. They stopped in their tracks and turned around. Mrs. Valentine, fine, O-B-E, if it was possible, looked more furious than ever. Who said that? A band, a hand went up quickly from a person on stage. It was Ryan Ward. Well, it was Mr. Carter inside Ryan Ward, and he seemed very proud and pleased with himself. Mr. Carter, or the man who seemed to be Mr. Carter, shrugged. He was clearly not going to punish Ryan Ward for that either. So Mrs. Valentine Fine OVE raised herself up to her very not full height and said, Bah! and left the assembly hall. Part 5. School Debate, Brackettwood 1, Oakcroft 1. Chapter 51. Weird Music. Ryan, Ryan, can you hear me? A tiny blinking of the eyes indicated that he could. I think he's waking up. Ryan! Ryan opened his eyes. His mum, Tina, was there in Diana, looking down at him. He was clearly in a bed. In fact, he was clearly in the same emergency room in the same hospital as two weeks ago, when this whole thing had started. Oh, Ryan, said his mum, and threw her arms around him. What's happening with this fainting? I'm really worried about you. It was at this point that Ryan realised he wasn't, however, in the same bed as two weeks ago. He was in the opposite bed because he could see Mr Carter asleep in the facing bed. And it was Mr Carter. And he was Ryan. Which might also be why it felt quite nice and quite like coming home that Tina, his mum, was giving him a big hug. Mrs Ward, can I have a word, said the doctor. It might be just best just to let Ryan get used to the light for a bit. Then you can come and talk to him. His mum broke the hug, gave him a kiss on the forehead and moved away with the doctor. At which point Ryan turned to Deonna and said quietly, What happened? I need to know who you are first, she replied softly. He frowned. Why do you need to know that? Because otherwise explaining what happened will be really confusing. Because I'll be saying Mr Carter when I mean you and you when I mean Mr Carter. I mean, I'll probably be doing that anyway, but at least I'll know who I'm talking to. Oh yes, I'm Ryan. I'm back in my own body, which I have to say, although I'm a bit groggy, feels much better. I don't recommend suddenly being 43 physically at all. So what happened? Well, she said, after the debate, the off-head inspectors went and got cleaned up in the toilets. Thank heavens we sorted those out. Yes, and then me and you and Ryan, who at that point was really Mr Carter, went to his, your, oh, whatevs, the head teacher's office. Then we started talking about what had happened and whether or not it would be, it would be enough for us to get a good off-head rating. And while we were talking, this weird musical box that was on the head teacher's desk started playing its weird music. And then when I looked around, both of you were lying asleep on the floor. Ryan looked at her. Thanks. What, for, for telling you all that? No, well, yes, but more for just being such a good friend. And also for smashing your bit of the debate. It was amazing. She smiled at me, at him. It's going to, it's good to have you back, Ryan, she said. Chapter 52, Brother. One of the annoying things about coming out of hospital was that Ryan had just been in bed and now had to go to bed. This was partly because he'd come out in the evening and partly because the doctors had told his mum that pro he probably should get more rest. What with having had another one of those strange fainting moments they couldn't understand. That's what doctors prescribe when something they can't understand happens to someone. Rest. But he was pleased, having said that, to be back in his own bed. Not so much because of the one in the hospital, in which he'd only been awake for a tiny bit anyway, but because of Mr Carter's, which had always been too big. Perhaps the weirdest thing about the whole experience, apart obviously from going to the toilet, which we're still not going to go into, was sleeping in his head teacher's bed. I'm sorry, said Tina. I still haven't changed the duvet. Pardon, said Ryan, sitting up worried, as he'd have liked the duvet to have been washed since Mr Carter had slept in his bed. Then again, Mr Carter had also been sleeping in his body, so there was clearly still a lot of processing to be done. Uve, said Holly, who was on Tina's lap. Well, You've been saying for a while that this one, with all the pirates on the cover, is a bit young for you, which I guess it is. I really felt that recently you weren't feeling well and I tucked you in. You did? Yes, I thought you felt too old now for pirates. Irates, said Ollie, Holly. Irates, Uve. Night, night, Ryan, came a voice from outside the room. Ba whooshoo! Night, night, Aunt Annie, said Ryan. Then, as she walked away from the door, he added quietly, Uh, how long is she staying? Just tonight. At least she didn't actually step inside the room. Frog Fagroon! Yes, said Ryan, smiling at some level, actually pleased to hear these sounds. It was all part of his family life, his familiar family life. So anyway, I've been looking at a few other duvets. There's an all-black one you can get. Mum, said Ryan. 
I love this duvet. She frowned. Really? Yes, he said, smiling. And I love you. Tina frowned again harder. She was smiling as well because it was such a lovely thing for him to say. But she couldn't stop the frown de deepening at the same time. Ryan never said that normally, not unless she forced him to be saying it by and staring at him until he had to reply in kind. It made her wonder for a second about all the times recently that Ryan had been saying he wasn't Ryan. But then Holly reached up to her brother, touched his cheek and said, Ryan, yes, Ryan, my brother. And both of them laughed and clapped because Holly had never said his whole name and got it right ever before. Chapter 53. Is that all? Ryan Ward sat anxiously outside the head teacher's office. He'd been here many times before, of course, but he had hoped that now things might be different. Mr Carter's assembly had been OK. He'd basically announced that things had been a little strange for a while, but now it was time to get everything back to normal. Then at the end of it, he'd said quite sternly, And Ryan Ward, come see me in my office after school. So maybe it was all going to be boringly back to normal, with him just as much in trouble as ever. Maybe Mr Carter was just going to tell him off for, a, for all the things he'd done when he'd been head teacher. Then Mr Carter opened the door. Hello, Ryan, he said. Come in. Which Ryan did and went to sit down opposite Mr Carter's desk. Look, Mr Carter, he said, I'm really sorry about everything I did when, when I was you. I mean, all the making reception kids, taking classes and the British tortoise game and cancelling the homework and... Are you well? said Mr Carter. Pardon? Well, you know, everything in its proper place. No ill effects from our... Uh, experience. Uh, oh yeah, I'm fine. And actually, I'm very pleased that when I go for a wee now, I don't have to... Yeah, yes, I think it's still best that we don't talk about that. Yes, yes, okay. In fact, I'm not sure if we should really mention this, the whole body swap thing, to anyone. Apart, obviously, from Diona, who already knows, because it might make us sound a bit... Mad, said Ryan. Hmm, said Mr Carter. There was a short pause then. Mr Carter frowned as if not sure what to say next. Ryan started to wonder when the big telling off was coming. Also, Ryan, I just wanted to let you know a few things, said the head teacher eventually, that I thought you might like to know. First of all, uh, uh, they're, they're here. Who is, said Ryan, looking around, but Mr Carter had gone to the door and opened it. He was smiling a lot for him. Ryan couldn't work out why until he saw his mum coming through the door in a wheelchair. Not his mum, Mr Carter's mum. Grace. She was being pushed by Zadie, the nurse. Hello, Mum, said Mr Carter softly. Hello, Michael, said Grace, smiling. She had a blanket over her knees and a needle in the back of her hand that was connected to a bag of liquid attached to the chair. But she looked happy. Zadie pushed the chair into the room and then wheeled it round so she was facing Mr Carter and Ryan. Wow, said Ryan. Hello, said Grace. Who are you? This is Ryan Ward, Mum. He's one of our pupils here. Ryan, this is my mum, Grace. Yes, I know... And, conti and, continued Mr Carter, cutting him off, my mum's not been very well, but recently she's got a bit better. It was unexpected. He paused and then continued. The doctors think that when I... As he spoke, he looked closely at Ryan. Yes, when I came to see her last time, it cheered her up a lot. The way I was. You cried, said Grace, reaching out a hand to him. He took it and smiled at her. Yes, uh, apparently, I mean, it's a bit of a blur in my memory. Perhaps, said Ryan, smiling a little himself now, perhaps because you were so emotional. Mr Carter nodded. Well, anyway, whatever happened, it helped my mother's state of mind and she's had at least a temporary reprieve. Hello, everybody, said Grace. I am still here. You see, said Zadie, looking at Mr Carter, right back to her normal self. Sorry, Mum. That's all right, Michael. I just wanted to see the school. It's lovely. Mr Carter and Ryan exchanged glances. Ryan's glance said quite clearly... I thought you said she was much better, but now she said the school is lovely. Yes, said Zadie, but we need to get back. I told them we wouldn't be out for long. Grace nodded and Zadie gripped the handles of her wheelchair. Grace looked up. Mr Carter knelt down and kissed her gently on the cheek. She closed her eyes and then she opened them, held out her hand and said, Very nice to meet you, Ryan. Ryan took her hand. It was light as a feather. As they touched, she added, and I hope we meet again. I wouldn't want this to be the only time we've met. Ryan looked at her. She was smiling as if, as if she knew it wasn't. Ryan opened his mouth to a reply, perhaps even to tell her it wasn't. But then Zadie said, come on, Grace, stop stalling, and pulled her backwards and out of the door. Ryan watched her go. Then he felt a hand on his shoulder. He looked up. Mr Carter was looking down at him. Thank you, he said. Ryan turned to leave. Is that all, Mr Carter? No, said the headteacher. Not quite. There's just one more thing. Chapter 54. One more thing. Ryan turned back. 
I just wanted to tell you something as well, continued Mr. Carter. You remember when we had that uh, slightly heated conversation, just after you told me you'd been to see my mother, and I, well, I said how I thought this process was about teaching you something, how to be a bit more grown up. Ryan nodded. I think it did, he said. Yes, but I think it was also teaching me something, which I didn't realise at the time. Which was what, said Ryan. Mr. Carter looked thoughtful for a moment. Then he said, how to be a bit less grown up. <laughs> Here's the thing. Ryan, really at heart, people my age, we're not grown-ups. We're just older children. Life forces, has, life forces us to behave in a very serious way a lot of the time. But inside, most of us feel, well, about your age, about 11. But I think I'd forgotten that, however old you are, you don't have to spend all your time being an adult. Right, said Ryan, nodding. I mean, don't get me wrong. Now that I'm back being me, uh, I'm not going to introduce funny walks and shouting in the corridors. And when I was you, when I did the prank with the cake stew on top of the inspectors, well, I realise now that was the child part, the immature part, taking over, going too far. So it's a balance, really, I suppose. And uh, as Mr Carter talked, Ryan looked out of the window, not really listening anymore. Ryan had grown up a bit during the adventure. He even secretly quite liked this new relationship with Mr Carter, where Mr Carter was sort of like his dad, doing the sort of dad things his real dad never did, like teaching him important life lessons. But Ryan could see his friends playing football in the playground now and felt he'd like Mr Carter to stop with the important life lessons so he could get out there and join in. And uh, one more thing I wanted to tell you, said Mr Carter, snapping Ryan's attention back to him. Well, not tell you, share with you. One more thing I thought we should do together. Mr Carter turned round. On his desk, desk next to the musical box, in fact, was an envelope. It was marked off head. Chapter 55. One more, one more thing. You haven't opened it yet, said Ryan. No, as I say, I wanted to share it with you, as I think whatever is in here, you are more than partly responsible for. Hmm, Ryan got up and went to the window. Not just me. What are you doing, said Mr Carter, opening the window. That one is always a bit stiff. Not if you twist it here, I noticed, when I was in this office, and then lift this handle a bit. Oh, said Mr Carter, I never worked that out. Diana, shouted Ryan out of the open window. D, come here. I'm playing football. I know, just for a moment. She raised her eyes to heaven, waved a sorry gesture at her playmates and ran over. What is it? She said breathlessly. Mr Carter wants to share something with us, said Ryan. Yes, of course, said Mr Carter, nodding. You're right, this. And he held up the off-head envelope. Should involve the three of us. Oh, cripes, said Diona. Cripes, said Ryan. I'm trying to avoid rude words, said Diona. Probably best, said Mr Carter. OK, here we go. The crowded round, they crowded round the envelope, a bit like TV and film stars do when they're announcing an award. Mr Carter ripped the top off it. He took out a piece of paper and held it up. I can't look, said Diona, shutting her eyes. Is it good? It isn't, said Ryan. Oh no, said Diona sadly. Inadequate again. Oh no, oh no. Not that either, said Ryan. OMG, they, they haven't created a rubbish writing, have they? Diona, said Mr Carter gently. Open your eyes. Diona apparently still wasn't convinced this was a good idea, so just opened one. But when she saw what was written on the paper, she thought she must have read it wrongly, that it was some kind of one-eyed misunderstanding. It was the same, though, when she opened the other one, so it must be true. Outstanding, she said. Yes, said Ryan. That's amazing, said Diona. Wow, said Ryan. That really is amazing. It is, said Mr Carter. I did make sure to provide Offhead with a bit of extra information, of course. For example, that since your little stint in the job, the pupils in this school have become better. Would you believe that handing in homework, coming up with great ideas for class activities, they're generally more disciplined too. It's as if, as if you gave them a little holiday from, well, from a rather stuffy idea of what school should be, and they enjoyed that and have come back as model school children. Ryan nodded, surprised but pleased. But you know what? I think mainly, Mr Carter said, folding up a bit of paper, it was about what you two were like at the debate. Those teach speeches you made were inspiring. They saved the school. Diona and Ryan looked at each other. I suppose we did, said Ryan. Hey, said Diona, raising her palm. High five? Bit normal? Do it. He slapped her palm, smiling. On which note, said Mr Carter, this school needs a head pupil. We haven't had one before, most schools do, and I was wondering if maybe you... Well, said Ryan, it's been an amazing journey for me. The naughtiest boy in the school. But hey, yes, Mr Carter, I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to be head boy. Mr Carter nodded and then said, not you, you big Wally. Diona, of course. I'm offering her head girl. You are, said Diona. You are, said Ryan. Mr Carter nodded. Diona smiled. Hey, 
Yes, thank you. Why not? Why not indeed, Diana? Wow, said Ryan a little sheepishly. Head kid, cool. She looked out of the window. Parents had started arriving to pick up their children. Can I go and tell my mum? Uh, I think she'll be really proud. Of course. And she ran back out into the playground. Mr Carter and Ryan looked at each other for a moment and then Mr Carter burst out laughing. A big pointed. <laughs> you, my friend, just got pranked. You're so lame. You're one dank meme. Now it was Ryan d Ryan's turn to smile. Good one. Not as good as your onstage cake mix prank, obviously. Yes, that was amazing. Top draw. Getting the containers up there must have been tough. It was, but I was committed. You were, but I've got to say, you had me with that head boy thing. He pointed an index finger at Mr Carter and said, Keep pranking, bro. One day you might be at my level. And then he turned to go out into the playground. Ryan, said Mr Carter. Ryan turned back. Just one more, one more thing. Mr Carter reached out a hand. For a second, Ryan was a bit worried. Was he going to slap him? Was he still annoyed? But then he grabbed hold of Ryan's tie, dangling two buttons down his neck as ever, not properly tied. Here, he said, and pulled it right up to Ryan's collar. Mr Carter stood back and admired his handiwork. At last, he said. Ryan felt his tie, made a whatevs face and looked up. OK, sure, he said. But I think this, he reached out and pulled Mr Carter's tie down a notch so it hung loosely on him for once, might now suit you a bit better. Mr Carter smiled. He glanced into the mirror above the fireplace, the same one Mr Barrington had looked at to try to work out the words on his forehead a little while ago and said, you know what, Ryan, I think you might be right. Ryan nodded. Then he turned and ran out towards the playground. Mr Carter watched him go, dodging all the footballers and fights and hopscotches and handheld video gaming and climbing and of climbing frames going on towards his mum. Tina Ward, in fact, saw Mr Carter looking out of his window and waved and smiled at him in a friendly way. He waved back, remembering something from when he was Ryan, already becoming a little dim in his memory. What she'd said about wanting him to t tell her something real about himself, about Mr Carter, that is, about what he was like as a person. Maybe, he thought, I'll try and do that tomorrow. But for now, he had things to do. He had to sort out tomorrow's assembly and check out the supply teacher availabilities to organise a meeting of the Board of Governors and indeed to write an announcement celebrating the school's new off-head rating. Just before he sat down at his computer to type, though, he noticed something on his desk and he remembered what Ryan had just said before leaving his office. Keep pranking, bro. He picked up the object from the desk. He knew exactly what to do. Coda. Belinda, thank you uh, for coming into my office. I wanted to show you this. What is it, Mrs. Valentine Fine OBE? It just arrived today from that terrible Mr. Carter man at that awful bracket wood place. I suppose it might be some kind of peace offering, some way of saying sorry. Yes, I suppose it might. It's a box, is it? Yes, with some kind of arrow design on it. Rather beautiful, certainly, coming from that place. It's a musical box, I think. Can't find the key. Hmm. Let me give it a bit of a bang down on the desk. Bang. All right. Hmm. I suppose that's it. That is quite a nice tune. And that is the end of Head Kid by David Baddiel. Really hope you enjoyed that story, guys. I'll be back soon with lots more stories and videos coming your way very soon. If you'd like to subscribe or hit a like, that's always appreciated. Thanks for listening, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.